What is up guys? I'm going to tie a, a sweet, awesome, secret intruder pattern for you guys today. It's one of my guide patterns that I use for the two-hand rod fishing for Chinook in Alaska. We're going to be using shanks today. Shanks and hanger hooks. Um, you can tie these on, you could put this on a regular hook if you wanted. Uh, I like the shanks because uh, you, get a, you get short strikes with salmon and if you like with shanks and a hanger hook, you just get them a little bit better, better hook, hooking ratio. So I'm going to take my toothy critter pike wire here and I'm going to run it about the same length, maybe a little bit more off the back of this shank here. I'm going to try and put one piece of the wire on each side of the shank so it kind of keeps a little bit of an open loop off the back. And another nice thing about tying like this is um, you don't have to worry about hooking your hand all day. Uh, another option for this would be um, you could run it on a tube. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of rabbit. Uh, it doesn't have to be this um, two-tone striped rabbit. Um, what this is going to do, I'm going to tie it on here. I'm going to do one wrap around and then tie it off. And what I'm using this for is um, just a little bump off the tail um, to, to kick the feathers we're going to put on here. To kick them out, give a little bit more body off the tail. So I'm actually going to take a piece of marabou and I'm actually going to palmer this in. So I've taken a piece of marabou and I've stripped the top, maybe third section off from this because it gets a little nappy. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to tie it in. And you got to be careful because these are very delicate and they like to snap when you're palmering them or when you're tying them in. It happens pretty much every time if you're not careful. All right, so I tied that in. I'm gonna pull the feathers back. Move my bobbin out of the way. I'm just gonna wrap and I'm gonna slowly pull all my feathers back as I wrap. Slowly kinda kind of brushing it with my hand as I'm going and then what that's going to do is kind of stop it from getting too tangled up oh, one more loop and one more wrap and then we're good alright all good not too many bumps and loops keeps it pretty once twice three times. All right, that's tied in. Trim that off. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a couple pieces of peacock. You kind of got to take a piece and line up the tips so they're all at least decently close lined up. You can kind of pull the shorter ones out. Um, trim them if you want. These are kind of uneven length, but that's okay. And then I'm kind of just going to lay them back as a wing, maybe a little bit longer than the marabou. 
And what that's going to do is these kind of give a little bit more structure than the Marabou does. The Marabou gives a nice flowy look and then the Ostrich gives a nice structured steady body. Alright, cool. And then last, we are going to take some uh, something to give it, make the color pop a little bit. Now I'm going to take some, I'm going to take two pieces of uh, Grizzly Hackle, and you can get these in multi-packs. They actually make them for intruders now, but I just have a hide right here. I'm going to take two pieces that I've matched up in similar length. And I'm going to put one on each side. All right. So that's done, and now what I'm going to do, that's kind of the main tail section, is I'm going to tie in a piece of pearl diamond braid. I'm just going to take this and just slowly wrap up to give it some body. Pretty basic start to uh, to an intruder. You're probably thinking what makes this special, makes this a guide pattern, and what I do next is kind of what makes it unique. So I actually take this one and I'm going to run it as a jointed intruder. And that's kind of what I do to make it a little different. What that does is you have you have two small to medium size um, shanks. These are the fish skull ones, I believe. And then what that does is it makes it kind of waggle a little extra in the water. And we're going to start off right where we left off. Go right to the back. stop right in the middle of the shank and we're just going to wrap this diamond braid all the way up and then go ahead and stop it right there all right we're going to get our rabbit back out This time we're going to do a couple extra wraps of the rabbit just to give it a little bit more. Oh, wants to lay backwards. There we go. That's good. Step one is good. Now we're going to go back to our marabou. You don't want to tie in too close to the tip. That's where it breaks easily. So you can tie back maybe an inch or so. And then we're going to wrap slowly Palmer as we brush everything back. Make sure everything's nice and pretty. back to our ostrich. Now on the back we only put it on the top. The difference is on the front I like to do a piece, a nice clump on the top and the bottom. And there's the top and now we go to the bottom. And the clumps are about 
maybe 10 to 15 hurls each. And there's the bottom. And then now we're going to go to our grizzly. All right. <clears throat> Almost done. Just to give it some extra color, I'm going to do a quick collar of some fluorescent orange laser dub. Maybe one clump on bottom, one clump on top. This is just going to accent a little bit. Give it more of a fire tiger feel than a plain chartreuse. And you could leave it at this point if you wanted. Um, a lot of intruders have a kind of a naked dumbbell head. But I'm actually going to do a couple more wraps with our rabbit here and this is mini rabbit so it's a little bit smaller and I can actually wrap it around the eyes with this mini rabbit make sure the ostrich doesn't really stick to it Gonna do one wrap around behind. Try and do one right between the eyes. And then I try and do one right in front. If you don't have mini rabbit, or if you don't have a lot of space, you can do a dubbing loop with rabbit hair, and that works perfect. It does the job just right. But mini rabbit's a little bit faster. Pull everything together. I'm gonna wrap it up. Trim that. A little bit of UV. And we are good to go. So this is a bigger fly, but it's something you're going to be using on maybe an 8 weight or a 9 weight single hand or spay. And you're going for bigger fish anyways, so it should be able to turn over in a, on a bigger rod. Um, big fish, big meal, you know, that's the, that's the idea. Proven colors. My little twist is just a little bit of articulation.